My name is Doug Gould, Director of Strategic Partnerships here at Zoox. Zoox is an autonomous mobility company, and we are providing a robo-taxi service that is going to be cleaner, safer, and more enjoyable than any human-driven alternative. What immediately jumps out, right, there's nothing that you would kind of think of as the driving implements of a vehicle. So there's no steering wheel, no accelerator, no brake. This was fully designed for the rider experience. Something that, you know, I personally like is you have an individualized experience. So every passenger has their own display here where they can control the music. They have a map of their route so you know how long it's going to be until you get to your destination. You can control the temperature, how much air, how much heat you need. And then just some fun design elements, some celestial headliners up in the ceiling, making for a nice environment. You don't need to focus on the road. So if you just wanted to do some work, call a friend, you know, catch up on a book, you could do that. The sensors are the eyes of the vehicle. Um, and what you see is on each of the four corners, we have sensor pods um, and we also have sensors on the top of the vehicle on the sides of the vehicle and it's a combination of camera radar lidar long wave infrared and then we fuse all those sensor modalities so that we have really a 3d map of the world we're able to see things better than any human could so we do all of our processing locally and that's important for a variety of reasons. Sometimes people ask about, you know, could the vehicles be hacked? And even though most bad actors, when they try to kind of infiltrate something, will have to do it physically, and that is next to impossible because these vehicles are always under our control when they're not out on the road and being monitored by our tele-guidance professionals. They're in one of our operations facilities that's controlled by us, but also by having that local compute everything that is driving the ai is done locally so that's important a, a couple of different things with, with the door we have a camera system to, to visually see who's approaching the door we have this microphone speaker system so let's say a first responder were to come to the vehicle and need to communicate with someone we could do that with a human being on the other line again monitoring the vehicle and then being able to communicate so that we can be good partners to first responders. Uh, speaking of which, we also have new microphones on the vehicle to better detect where sirens and sounds from police or fire vehicles are coming from to again just make our vehicle that much safer in these very complex urban environments. So if I could show you around here maybe. This is just one side of the vehicle. As mentioned before, it's bi-directional. So in this instance, you see the red tail lights. So we would be driving, let's say, in that south direction. But if we pulled into a pretty tight spot where a three-point turn just wouldn't be feasible, we could very quickly make this north side, then the front side, these become white, and you just start driving in this direction, and you're off and on your way. All this is real technology and solutions that we have today, even commercially available technologies, which we'll use to demonstrate this new level of personalized automation. Okay, okay. can follow. Please. 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 Okay, you can use the ultra or wide band. Yeah, ultra wide band, exactly. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a moment, please. Um, the the blinds are going up, the lights are on. Okay, that's an immediate thing. You might have heard right now that the AC just turned off because the child likes it warm, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't care about paying the bills. You know, it's yeah. it's winter here. They want to you know have the heat go on, right? And so that was set at 80 degrees, and so therefore that that, that comfort level was then you know personalized to them. Okay. The music came on and there's a track that, that was more, you know, associated with their, their preferences in the playlist. And exactly as you mentioned, ultra wideband technology that's embedded in your phone, mm -hmm. embedded in your watch potentially, or other type of device, is what's able to use to identify exactly where you are to a very precise yeah. uh, location and who you are. Mm -hmm. And so based off of that, Mike's gonna bring in his ultra wideband phone there and you'll see there's so gonna be some difference. I do pay the bills here. So the house should respond to my preferences. This is showing 
personalized automation using UWB over a fully enabled Matter network. So I'm gonna step over here and I'm gonna use this device here that's running speed to and text. And I'm gonna say something as simple as, hey Matter, I am cold. And based off of that, it's gonna understand my intent and it's gonna actually query the room and say, hey, what's the temperature now? And then actually raise the set point over here to something that's above what the current room temperature is at 76. And then based off of that, it said, hey, you know, a little bit above, let's go to 80 degrees, turn off the AC again, and, and now understand by intent. And that personalization can also, or that interaction can then take place. It is the SVP 7000. This is an image sensor, typical of what you would see in a webcam on a PC. It is processing in this chip uh, visual data that in this case you can see includes my face, my pose, and a tag that identifies me. All of the AI inferencing occurs on the ASIC and only metadata leaves, so there's no uh, privacy implications or concerns. So with that information, keeping it entirely private on this piece of silicon, we can perform inferencing that uh, gives these experiential benefits, which Anthony will show you. A couple of the applications that we've put together. On a large multi-monitor situation, people lose their cursors all the time. So rather than shaking and trying to find all your cursors, we're able to move from monitor to monitor with the cursor following your gaze, with no need to use the mouse. You can drag and drop using the same thing by grabbing a window, moving from monitor to monitor, don't need to move your mouse. We have a privacy application that we put together called Minimized Exposure. This basically glasses over the windows that you're not looking at. This is user-based detection versus human detection. So even if there's somebody behind me, it knows that I'm the primary user. So if I get up and walk away, you can see the screens have all locked. Respond to anybody else. You can come in and attempt to access the system. It won't allow me to. It recognizes me as the primary user and allows me to go back to work. Hi, my name is John Dixon. I'm the Vice President of America Sales and the Chief Marketing Officer here at Silicon Labs. Here you see uh, Cisco. It's a Wi-Fi wi 6E access point. Uh, inside of this Wi-Fi 6E access point, the interesting thing about this is this is when Cisco has enabled IoT capability with our radios. And what that means is it's the ability to connect to multiple different endpoints in a building, in a store, in a Target, in a Walmart kind of an application, in a hospital, where you have lots of different capability of positioning and location finding all across very, very large buildings. So really interesting application there that we enable for Cisco. And this is more of the really focused on security capability that we've enabled for um, uh, one, of our one of our customers. And it's the secure vault capability that is sitting on our chips, uh, enables people to use crypto. Uh, and this is a crypto device for enabling crypto payment. Uh, and it's the most security level three security capability on Bluetooth that we enable this product with. This is another product with a, a great company we've been partnering with for a long time and we've enabled all of their window door sensors and alarm panels uh, with our sub gigahertz Z-Wave capability. Yeah, Silicon Labs uh, is a company that's been around for about 26 years. We've had lots of different evolutions. Uh, right now we would sell, uh, we would be the number one supplier of IoT wireless devices in the world. You have Matter, we're one of the five founding members of Matter and the main contributor for the code of Matter that really is bringing together all of the protocols that are used in smart home to try to have one simple smart protocol that Apple, Amazon, Apple, you know, Samsung, Comcast, Google, all these people use. So you don't have to go into a store and try to get something that works with all these different ecosystems separately where one product, like a door lock, just works with everything. Yeah, like the th exciting things at, at CES that we see that are really technology driven. Uh, Connected Health uh, has really had a resurgence, especially around insulin management. Uh, that market is exploding. I'm Jean-Louis Carrara, VP Americas for Keegan. Keegan is a eSIM and iSIM secure solution provider. We have the operating system for this SIM, but we also have all the servers that are necessary to manage and download these profiles over time. We announced recently, uh, last week with Teal, 
one of the first interoperability testing between an OS from Keegan, a new ICC from Keegan, and Teal's platforms. The CES this year was by far the most successful we've had. Uh, it's been it's been a busy CES because of the attendance uh, bouncing from the pandemic, but also because Keegan has reached a level of recognition now in the market. We're meeting with our MNOs, MVNOs, uh, the module providers, system on chips, all our partners essentially, which are increasingly interested in reducing their number of SKUs and designing products that fit their manufacturing uh, needs of reducing the number of SKUs and making in-factory provisioning uh, a reality for them. The most interesting part of 2024 is going to be actually launching real solutions around SGP.32. I think a number of companies will do the integration this year. That's exciting because it brings all the ease of use that we have in smartphones for the consumers, bringing it into the IoT sphere and that really requires support from all the parties, and we're getting there, and that's going to be 2024 for us. I'm Marlijn Inschoten, a marketing manager at Accelera AI. And at Accelera AI, we are developing the future of artificial intelligence, um, and we're primarily focusing on computer vision. Our first commercial available chip is an AI processing unit, MADIS, integrated into cards, boards and systems. And this is actually our first uh, commercially available product that we're assembling to our early access program customers right now. So let's talk about security and surveillance because it's uh, it's an important market for us, uh, not only with the high inference performance that we have, we have the possibility to do multi-stream inference. Um, and for that, I would like to introduce uh, Doug. Doug Watts, I headed the AI application engineering here at Acceler AI. What we have here is a performance demonstration of Yolo V5S, which is a pretty popular model today with our customers. We have it running on a single uh, AI accelerator chip, running 16 RTSP streams uh, with a total throughput of over 400 FPS. The production part will run at a slightly higher clock speed and with some architectural improvements, we'll end up at around 800 FPS. So we're an accelerator, which means that you can combine us with a number of different hosts. We're agnostic to the host. In this case, we're demonstrating the product with an Intel Core i CPU and the image pre and post processing we're running on the embedded GPU of the Intel. And that's freeing up a lot of the CPU for the user's application. All of the core AI tense processing is happening on our AI accelerator. So we've been talking about hardware a lot, which is important, but equally important is software, right? So we, we have our Voyager software development kit. And how, how do you get this running? This and many other models are all originally trained to be run in the cloud. And with an embedded device, uh, typically there's much less compute available uh, and much lower accuracy. And so with all our customers, it, it, it's, it's an important consideration. How do I take my model and run it on the platform? With Voyager, we provide a very simple interface whereby the customer can bring their original model along with a couple of hundred images from the training data set, put it through our tool chain, and ultimately, the compiler takes care of the quantization and compilation and outputs a model that can run directly on our platform uh, within a, the environment of the GStream of pipeline. And that's, that's exactly what we're showing here. I mean, that's really impressive, Doc. So thanks for explaining. And, uh, you know, if you just look at, at technologies and, and other things that are currently available, so how, how would this look into, into the market? I mean, in terms of performance per, per watt and performance per, per dollar ratios, I mean, how, how does it look? Yeah, good question. Well, essentially, with this level of performance, uh, what we're seeing is that the customers that have existing products in the market today that may be using uh, two cards to achieve that performance are able to cost reduce that solution by taking just a single uh, Accelera card into, into the product. So we have higher performance, we have lower power, um, and it's all at a fraction of the cost of solutions available today. So that's great. Thank you very much for the explanation, Doc. Um, so I think that was a generic overview of what we can do with our Medis AI platform. Thank you very much for watching. Hi, my name is Curtis Golden. I'm president of Americas for FlowLive. FlowLive is an IoT software as a service company. Uh, we provide a suite of uh, connectivity services pro uh, products there, including Core Network as a service, where we have 
a full suite of core network that goes from 2G to 5G standalone. Uh, we also have our connectivity management platform as a service, bind those to create what we call hyperlocal global connectivity, uh, where you can have one SIM that's able to connect uh, anywhere in the world uh, with multiple operators there, and you can localize uh, the connectivity through our local core network that's based there, uh, as well as doing things like uh, satellite services over NB. We're excited about where the industry is going overall. Uh, we're hearing a lot of talk about non-terrestrial uh, cellular technology there, where we're combining the Release 17 solution uh, into our solution suite there to really allow people to extend the connectivity coverage beyond cellular. And then the other thing, we've heard a lot of conversations about uh, AI and how AI is impacting um, IoT as a uh, general thing. And that area we know is uh, certainly growing. Uh, we are doing a lot of AI uh, innovation within our core network infrastructure and all of the information that we're getting. I'm Taz Carpelli, I'm the founder of Field Theory. Uh, you, Shalini, I've had the front end business development. Uh, Elizabeth Iwanski, I do mechanical engineering and project management for Field Theory. So we are a RF and intended design house. So we do a lot of RF front ends and as well as do custom and, and uh, off the shelf intended designs. You know, the things I always like seeing is down here in Eureka Park. This is where the innovators are. This is where you find the engineers, where you can talk to them about how they came up with the ideas. One of the cooler areas is back over in the back over here where the university section was. I love talking to those guys and seeing how they got through their issues. And it's, it's students that are really passionate about, you know, they can talk about everything about the product. So, so you can talk to the engineers. Yeah. 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 So. And you're seeing the prototypes, which is like so fun to like follow them through their journey when they have like each set, like this is what we improved this time. Like that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Yeah, and then hopefully in the next year or so, you actually see that product in the market. And you say, ah, oh, I remember when. For IoT technology, some of the cooler things we've been seeing that's been coming out over the last year and going into next year is a lot of the medical wearables and implantables. That stuff for us is very difficult because uh, the way the, the, bo the body interacts with the RF and the antenna. Um, but we've come up with ways to help solve those issues.